Hello, my name is Dr. Maria Ryan, and I serve as Vice President and Chief Clinical Officer at the Colgate Palmolive Company. And I'm very happy to welcome all of you here today to our new LinkedIn series, Get to Know Your OQ with Colgate Palmolive. I'm very proud to have Dr. Rena D'Souza here to join me in this inaugural episode and to share her thoughts on an incredibly important topic, the state of oral health in America. Dr. D'Souza has a distinguished career with many accolades, including serving as president of the American Association of Dental, Oral, and Cranial Facial Research. She also served as president of the International Association for Dental Research. And after a long career in academia, she is now the director of the National Institute of Dental and Cranial Facial Research, part of the National Institutes of Health. So I think we should get right into this, Rena. Um, you know, NIDCR just released a report about uh, the state of oral health in America. We here at Colgate feel that it's really important that people are empowered with knowledge. And we have initiated a, a website called Know Your OQ uh, to help people to better understand uh, their oral health quotient, just like you know your IQ or your EQ to measure cognitive and, and emotional intelligence. We think uh, it would be very empowering for people to know more about oral health. Well, thank you, Maria. It's so exciting to be able to talk about the report and to also emphasize that NIDCR's primary mission and vision is to really uh, support guide, disseminate the research that is that is directed towards improving oral health for all. So, so the report signifies our commitment to do just that. So it is a milestone report, which will have an enormous impact, not just on public health, but in the way many Americans think about oral health. So you asked me about the good news, and of course, that's always a good place to start. So the report signifies, celebrates, the science and technology advances of the past 20 years. This knowledge that we created has actually taught us that dental caries or tooth decay, as well as periodontal disease, uh, are infectious diseases. But guess what? They're truly preventable. So with kids in the past 20 years, there's been progress in reducing dental caries, um, just in part because we've come together in different ways to make this happen. And we've understood that dental caries uh, is, can be prevented if in fact we consider all the other influences of life and society. So by integrating dental care within family and pediatric medical care settings, drawing in an integrated team of healthcare professionals, we can actually curb the progress of this disease. And now we also have to keep in mind that there are other diseases is in the oral cavity that affect teeth. And, and those in fact look like cavities, but they're caused by different other conditions. For example, dental erosion is a common disease of youth that drink a lot of sugar laden beverages. So, so we've made progress. It's good news that certain um, integrated systems have worked, but we have a way to go. That's great. And, and so what about the bad news from the report? Well, the not so good news is that, that despite <laughs> the significant research advances and we've had some policy reforms that have been very successful um, over the past 20 years, uh, we've understood better how to uh, diagnose and treat oral diseases, but yet many people of all ages and demographic backgrounds still have chronic health problems that relate to their oral cavity and they lack access to care. And then we have diseases of society where substance misuse and mental health conditions negatively affect the oral health of many, often giving rise to high levels of dental caries or decay. For this reason, I think oral health providers are really part of an integral uh, component of an interprofessional healthcare team caring for individuals, their families, and the communities they belong to. Yeah, and, and, and I, I think... I think to add on to it is, you know, we're all working our way through this COVID-19 pandemic and, and you know, we, we saw what happened uh, in the beginning of the pandemic when many dental offices were closed and, and people couldn't get in for care and they ended up in emergency rooms, really signifying that 
um, oral care is essential. And I believe, you know, one of the number one unmet health needs in children was dental care during the pandemic, the beginning of the pandemic. So, you know, what are your thoughts about how we're working through this COVID-19 pandemic and, and, and the needs that we face for people with oral care? Yes, I think the pandemic has proved to us that science and technology matters. We've seen that unfold in a very uh, almost magical way. But it's also told us as a public health crisis that oral health care providers has never before faced challenges that have come, that have informed us about new ways of ensuring that we have safety practices during dental care provisions, and that we treat disease by recognizing that oral health is inextricably linked to general health and well-being. And of course, it's also placed, I think, a, a, an acute awareness of the role of individuals to take on and to feel empowered that they can, in fact, guide their own health conditions through better practices. You know, this, the important thing that, you know, we focus on in the educational piece of Know Your OQ is that connection between oral and overall health. And I think a lot of people are really not aware of the fact that infection and inflammation in the mouth can have an impact on the rest of their body. And particularly in people who have diabetes, they may not be able to control it if they haven't controlled their oral disease or for respiratory diseases where if you have bacteria in your mouth, you can inhale them and they can actually um, exacerbate respiratory conditions. And so we know of a lot of these connections that exist. And what are your thoughts on um, the connections between oral and overall health? As, as, as I have always said, the mouth is a window into your overall health and well-being. You're correct uh, in saying that, and the report being as data-driven as it is, strongly emphasizes that the mouth is, just like you said, a gateway to the rest of the body. And I'll tell you why, because the risk, risk factors for diabetes, for cardiovascular disease, for many of the cancers are really the same that lead to dental and oral diseases. So if you're thinking of nutrition, you're thinking of alcohol, tobacco use, e-cigarettes, all of these are, are predisposing factors for the, for the threatening systemic diseases. Several of them are actually manifested in the mouth as COVID showed, you know, with the early loss of taste and then dry mouth and tongue ulcers uh, uh, coming along. So by acknowledging that we can create better behaviors in caring for your teeth and mouth is a good thing. It's just not about a great smile, although there is nothing wrong with that. It's really about taking care of your mouth in order to take care of the rest of you. The report also stresses that oral health providers must come together to recognize the determinants of health, that there is more than just personal influences. There are others that seem to, in the end, overcome these personal good habits. So that's a pretty sciencey way of saying it's not as easy as just telling people to brush their teeth as, as we need to pay attention to the other societal influences that can be over that can basically overcome these good oral habits. So the report, I think, in the end, um, uh, together comes uh, comes through as a very comprehensive delivery of the real problems that people have in accessing preventive care. If you take charge of it yourself, that's one big step. But it is, in fact, the larger problem of the lack of quality and affordable health care that affects some people more than others. So that has to change. And the report ultimately provides a guide to where our institute, along with the community and stakeholders, should continue to invest in research to find solutions to some of these larger societal problems that include systemic inequities. Yeah, and, and I do think that um, it, it has to be a, a full court press of not only dentists and hygienists, but other health professionals, including our physician and nursing colleagues, et cetera. And, you know, um, I, I think that for people, they, they can get going with this right now. And, and I think knowledge is power. And so, you know, going to knowyouroq.com and, and taking a free assessment 
determining how much you know about your oral health and the connections between your oral health and overall health that we've discussed is important. Um, understanding the importance of prevention. And, and yes, toothbrushing is not alone itself enough to address all of these issues, but it is a good place to start. And it is a good thing for people to know there are preventive strategies that they can take to maintain their oral health. And there are strategies that are necessary for us as oral care providers uh, that patients must take in order for us to be successful in managing um, their oral health. And so, you know, we encourage people to learn as much as possible, to make the changes that are necessary for better oral and overall health and staying away from those sugary uh, sodas and, 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 and really uh, eating awesome. well and taking care of themselves. And then of course, you know, the only way that we can really disseminate all of this knowledge is for everyone to share their learnings from this talk here today between the two of us uh, and many more to come in the future. I think the more people understand about oral health, the more they can advocate for the important work that you're doing uh, at NIDCR and all the researchers that exist in this country that are working on better solutions and, and better ways for us to manage oral health problems. So thank you, Rena, so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure.